Hi everybody, and thanks for watching the video. Uh, my name is Glenn Holland, and today we'll be looking at uh, all of the models that I have added to my collection uh, in, I guess, the second half of 2020. Um, all of these are models that I have had either built and completed, or built uh, in bricks and not had decals on them until very recently. And getting the decals on them is what I, when I considered them to be finished. So for that reason, I have not published any photos of these or any video, included them in any videos up until this point. Uh, obviously, I have several cards to go through, and the vast majority of them are new and completely original designs that, like I said, I have not posted photos of or videos of anywhere. So I'm very excited to get these finished and uh, add them completely and fully to my collection. So we'll start from front to back and go through them. I'm also going to try to do this all in one take, just for the ease of editing. So, uh, in the front here is two 46-foot, 70-ton mill gondolas. I have these both lettered for the Baltimore and Ohio. Uh, this was the Baltimore and Ohio Class 20-27M. Um, and there's a good reason that I built these, is so that I can put them behind my uh, 280 number 13 from the Buffalo Creek and Gully. Uh, I mentioned in the video that I did on number 13 that the BC&G ran uh, rail fan excursions in the 1960s, and these were uh, close to or exactly the kinds of cars that they used to do that. Uh, the Baltimore and Ohio connected to the BNO, I'm sorry, the BC&G in Dundon, West Virginia, and so it was very common to find BNO rolling stock on the BC&G lines. So these are the two basic cars that I've had built so far. They're both identical in construction entirely, and the only difference that they have is the car number. Uh, the ends are built to be removable so that I can take them out pretty easily, and I can do that on both cars, obviously. Um, but right now, I the only thing that they're missing to go behind 13 are benches down the middle of the uh, center there, and rail fans dressed in 1960s attire, which I definitely plan to do at some point, but uh, I will have to be making a lot of minifig orders on BrickLink. So these are the, the, that's these two cars move on to the tank car over here which I'll pick up and bring a little bit closer to the camera just for the ease to see. This is a brand new tank car that I designed. It is almost identical to the 10,000 gallon Type 27 tank car that I've designed before with a few differences and upgrades, namely being the frame, the uh, sort of diagonal member of the frame that you can see right here in the corner. I used some flex tube for that and I think it looks really neat. I also upgraded the brake detailing uh, I have a little bit more work to do there, but it's good enough. It's just adding another clip somewhere. Not a big deal. I also use different trucks than I did on the Type 27 and a different ladder technique. It's a little bit more fragile, which is why I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting it in a instructions. Uh, I have this one lettered for uh, the Waverly Oil Company uh, near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is, I, I thought this was a really neat car. I was scrolling through a, a gallery on Flickr, and I decided that this is a really neat car. Pittsburgh is somewhat close to where I am right now, and I thought that it would be really, really neat to add a car with Pittsburgh right on the side. So I added this one. Uh, I should mention all of these cars that are on the on my uh, table here use the new Brick Model Road and KD knuckle coupler adapters, which is uh, very good to use. I've been very, very happy with uh, having those on my freight cars so far. Moving further on, we have a Seaboard B-7 uh, round roof box car, uh, lettered for the Silver Meteor, or route of the Silver Meteor. I really like this car because it's it's a uh, much visually different 40-foot box car than I have had or I have seen before. I really like the uh, design and look of round roof box cars, and I really like the uh, Silver Meteor scheme and the Seaboard uh, Herald on the right side there. And so I decided to go for that car when I was looking for uh, a new car to build. And the reason, one of the other reasons that I built that car is because I had already designed the two cars behind it being 1932 ARA 40 foot box cars. Um, the, to, as far as I've been able to research, the B7 is nearly identical to the two, to the 1932 ARA box cars, obviously with the round roof uh, instead of the slope or peaked roof. So it was a pretty easy transition from the ARA version to the seaboard version. I just had to change the roof. I'm very happy with the way the roof turned out. It was a little bit of a challenge, but I think I pulled it off pretty well. And I think it looks great in reddish brown. Um, I will be making more cars similar to this in the future, probably a Pennsylvania X-Class 
class cars um, because they had round roofs as well in both 40 and 50 foot varieties. Uh, and again, these two behind it are 1932 ARA box cars, uh, 40 foot long to be exact. And the only difference between these are the ends of the car. The Louisiana Arkansas car here, if I can get it out without breaking it, has a smooth uh, riveted end, end wall of the car. And the gory and defeated car has a regular, a more typical dreadnought end. I did not find very many cars use the uh, smoother riveted design, but uh, I was able to find that one. And the Louisiana Ar and Arkansas scheme is pretty attractive and nice and simple, so I went with that. And the gory and defeated is a homage to uh, the late great John Allen, who uh, was a very famous model railroader and designed and built the gory and defeated. Uh, and he's one of my biggest inspirations in model railroading. Uh, so I had decided to build this car as a tribute to him and his incredible work. I also designed a new type of truck. It's not perfected yet, but it's intended to re represent a Barber S2. Uh, use these, use that truck on all three of these box cars that you see here. Slide that back for ease. And moving farther back on the third track, we've got a the one box car here is the uh, USRA 40 foot rebuilt steel box car. This is the car that I designed for Brickmania, and. Uh, I have not decaled it yet, but it's uh, pretty out in the open there by now. I will be putting the uh, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe War Bonds decals on here, hopefully in a custom number, but that has not been nailed down yet. But here is the, my, my own prototype version. Um, I believe some of the aspects are changing the kit, pro primarily on the interior, but uh, this, is, this is the car that I built originally. I'm very happy with this. It is on the heavier side, but I have no real problems with it. So the USRA designed uh, a number of cars, including uh, the box cars, which were obviously a standardized design. And uh, the rebuilt steel version is, uh, uh, as the name implies, rebuilt with a steel body from the original wooden cars, of which this is one. This is a USRA 40-foot double sheathed car, as opposed to a single sheath, which in, in which you would see the cross bracing down the outside of the car and uh, some ribs that would stick out from the inside from the car body. Um, the double sheet is a lot easier. I haven't perfected the uh, single sheet look yet, but I hope to do that soon because there are a number of those that I would like to build. Um, and obviously the only differences really between this car and the rebuilt steel is that this features a wood body where I used one by one bricks to simulate a wood pattern and the rebuilt steel uses one by two uh, bricks uh, to simulate a steel panel look. Uh, I lettered this one New York Central because of the uh, New York Central Mohawk that I have, obviously, and uh, I'm very happy with it. Turned out quite nicely, I think. Uh, dimensionally, these two cars are identical, which is uh, one of, which was one of my goals in modeling uh, that car, or those couple of cars. I built the rebuilt steel first, just so I could get it sent off to Brickmania sooner rather than later, and then I went back and did the uh, double sheet wood version. That takes care of all of the original designs that I have. Um, there are obviously quite a few of them, but I'm very happy with all of those and hope to build more cars similar to and exactly like them in the future. Um, we'll move on to the last three, which are not my designs, but cars that I have built and added to my collection since. Uh, the prime, first of which, and probably the more recognizable, or maybe anyways, is the New York Central 24-foot wood caboose designed by my, designed by my friend Kale Leapart, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, a prototype version, uh, obviously not decaled or anything like that, but the model has been published elsewhere, so again, I'm fine with uh, showing off that I have one. Kale did a wonderful job on this car. It features a full interior, accurate to the original cars, using original diagrams, as always, and he did a really nice job on the trucks in particular. It's a much, it's a shorter truck than we usually use on our freight cars, but and built in reddish brown, which adds another layer of complexity, but they turned out wonderfully and I quite like it. Uh, I hope to have a custom road number on this one as well, uh, get com as opposed to what's coming in the Brickmania uh, kit. And the last couple of cars that we have are probably ones that you've seen already, or ones that you've seen like already, but these, uh, these two refrigerator cars are the Dash 9 rebuilds that Kale designed, and I decided that I wanted to build a couple of them for myself. I love the look of the main Potatoes car because of the dark blue and white two-tone scheme, or three-tone scheme with the reddish-brown, 
And uh, the Bangor and Aroostook is obviously a New England railroad and could have been, uh, see and this car could have been seen behind a Mohawk. So I decided to build one of these and hopefully uh, have it in place behind my Mohawk and look pretty good there. And then the Southern and Union Pacific refrigerator car is one that I built because I really like the look of the dark red and the orange. And because this car fits with a couple of different locomotives that I would like to build someday. Um, I haven't completely finished them yet, but uh, I hope to do so very soon and post videos and photos about them. So I have just two of these cars now, but uh, I definitely will need some more of uh, the PFE reefers and some more cars like it to fit the locomotives that I have planned. I love the job that Kale did on those. Uh, they're some of my favorite cars that he's designed in more recent times, and I'm very happy to have two of them. Uh, that covers everything that I'm going to go over today. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'm very excited to finally get these uh, published and officially call them done. Uh, it's been a long, I quite literally have had a lot of these cars built for several, several months and just not been able to do very many things with them because I haven't had the decals with on them yet. So I'm very happy to finally move past that point and move on to other freight cars and passenger cars and locomotives, of course. Um, as for other projects I have coming on, I have uh, a number of other, I've, of course, I always have things that I'm working on. I have a number of locomotives in progress currently that uh, are not done yet, but like I said, hopefully will be done very soon. And as that happens, I will be able to post more videos and photos of them. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you all later.